Hello and welcome. This podcast is all about helping you discover what your brand is and how to make it stand out, be seen, and sought after. On this podcast, we dive into some personal stories because those are the true ties that bind you to your tribe, as well as everything else brand related from visuals to core values, colors to messaging, marketing tactics, and best of all, embracing your remarkable God-given potential. I'm Laura and I'm the host of the Embrace Your Brand podcast. I am married to my soulmate. We have three children and we live in a small town in Kentucky. Now I knew I wanted to go into creative business ever since I was a kid so that I could be a mom with a flexible lifestyle and make impact helping others. I was determined to find the right fit for me and that took work, trial and error, and lots and lots of learning along the way. It's how I've gained the knowledge I have today and share with you so that you can build your business brand in a way that combines logic, intuition, and God to help it grow. Now, thanks for being here. Let's get into today's podcast. Hey, how is it going today? (laughs) I hope you are doing well, and I want to welcome you back to another episode of Embrace Your Brand. So, today I kind of want to specifically talk about just the power of adding visual elements to your brand. Like, how does that really enhance your business? And let's kind of go into two different ways that it does this. So, how does it work in the online space? And how does it work when you have a a physical space, like a brick and mortar business or a network marketing business where you're doing in-person workshops or, you know, whatever that is. So I have had the opportunity to do both um, in my lifetime as different, you know, kind of career paths or uh, business endeavors. So first of all, let's talk about like, <clears throat> the the physical space like the brick and mortar how do you know visual elements really add to the brand the reputation the business that you're building well the physical space i think it's so much easier to really understand some of the things that help to to enhance uh the brand because It's about the image of you. It is about the image of your surroundings. So let's say, for instance, that you have a a shop, brick and mortar business, a restaurant, whatever it is. And I'm just going to kind of use a restaurant metaphor because when I went to culinary school back in like 2008, 2009, um, had a really cool class that was on restaurant management and we had to come up with a restaurant idea on paper, describe it and and come up with the ambiance, like be able to describe what it would be like when you walked into this space uh, to help really set the mood <clears throat> for the atmosphere, the, the restaurant atmosphere. And I remember going into a lot of detail on, like, just in imagining what it would be like if you actually sat down in this restaurant, how warm and inviting and cozy it would feel, and just the charm that it would have. And that is one of the, I think, really fun things about, you know, if you have a brick and mortar business, you get to design what type of feel that you want people to have when they come into your business. And it's done in a couple of ways. It's done in the overall interior design. <clears throat> so interior design aspects of like what colors you're using, what type of textures you're using, what type of lighting you're using. There's so many things that go into play to that that really add to your atmosphere. You know, if you wanted a little uh, farmhouse country restaurant, which is kind of similar to one that actually I go to a couple of, you know, occasionally and eat, everything is like 
there's chickens, there's eggs, there's things that say farm fresh, there's giant forks and spoons on the wall, and a frying pan that's a clock. I mean, they really kind of set the tone for this little country cooking place. You know, and if you go to, like, a relaxing coffee shop, you see, you know, stuffed sofas and fireplace, jazz music, you know, like, you're kind of getting the picture, I hope, of just how influential the interior design of a space is to setting the mood and the vibe of your business brand. Now, that's one way that you can do it with that interior design. Another way is how are you or your staff making people feel? So the interaction that they have from person to person, that creates another vibe that adds a layer to the, the brand that you are establishing. So one thing that comes really to mind is like if you've ever been to a Chick-fil-A, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience at a Chick-fil-A when it comes to the customer service. Everyone looks well put together, you know, like shirts tucked in, nice khaki pants, hair done well, you know, like they're really, they really have a more pristine look to them. They smile, they are greeting you kindly they're just so good at like taking your order taking care of you and you know it's my pleasure to serve you that kind of thing that they say so they're creating another layer to the brand of Chick-fil-a because of the way that they're interacting with the customers the way they're making the customers feel Uh, so that And how you do that adds another layer of depth to the brand that you are building. (coughs) So a lot of this stuff, you can go ahead and plan in forethought of like, what is it that I really want people to experience when they come into my building? When they come into my store, my restaurant, my shop, whatever it is, (coughs) what what kind of sense do I want to give them? I work at a, um, an insurance agency as a part-time accountant. You know, you walk in and it's like, it's kind of got a cozy vibe, but it's very professional looking. It's done well. You know, there's plaques on the wall of like the insurance company names that, you know, we do business with. And there's typically someone who will come greet you at the front door or is already sitting at one of the front desks. You know, it's just that atmosphere when you walk in it's like most of the time people know your name if not they're like they're ready to get to know you uh, and figure out how they can serve you and what they can help you with but that whole atmosphere from the interior design to the way that you make that person feel when they walk in the door by the interaction that they have with you or with your staff that's there your employees those things add such depth to your brand. Now the next kind of layer that you can use in a brick and mortar is the signage. You know, like what's your logo? What are things, what are the things that people are seeing outside of your establishment? Like how are they finding out about you? Are they seeing your ads on billboards? Are they seeing your logo on pins and business cards or (laughs) calendars or or whatever like where are they seeing this image this logo that is reminding them that you have this this shop this brick and mortar in town or you know wherever it is that you're located like where are people seeing and correlating okay there's that business I keep seeing that logo there's the there's the building with that logo on it you want to you want to definitely have that familiarity there that kind of redundancy when you use a when you have a logo you use it as frequently as possible on the building outside of the building in your advertising because it just it becomes a like just a very well remembered icon in the minds of people that as soon as they see it they know immediately what it is. Um, 
you know, even, I mean, even vehicles, every vehicle has the logo of the dealer on it. I mean, they didn't leave it up to guessing. They want you to know that this is a Ford, this is a Nissan, this is a Kia, you know, they don't just leave it up to chance. They, they brand their stuff. (laughs) So when it is out and about, it's doing advertising for them. So those are, those are a couple of things when it comes to brick and mortar businesses that are really important to just hone in on, know what that feel is that you want to give through the interior design, through the customer experience, and through the marketing outside of that brick and mortar. So let's kind of switch a little bit here to, let's say you do in-person business, but you're more of a network marketer or a distributor or something like that where you don't actually have a physical brick and mortar you may be doing things out of your home but you're meeting with people uh you're taking things to people like you know there's avon dealers there's uh mary Kay, there's uh, health and wellness companies so many different people that are you know going into business for themselves at a very low startup cost and they're kind of pushing a product they're pushing the the chance to have a flexible home-based type of business so in that case (coughs) you really have to focus more on growing and bringing awareness to your personal brand so people need to like know your name know your face and be able to associate that with the product that you are selling because one of the great things about that is just it's that <clears throat> it's that correlation almost it's like creating your own stereotype for oh when I see Laura I think brand design when I see Laura I think young living essential oils when I see Laura I think you know you instantly you know insert your name what do you want people instantly to know that you do or sell like how can you make that correlation and it's gonna look different per person some people want to do a lot of workshops if you do workshops you want to create that atmosphere in the workshop and give them that value on your specific niche of product service or opportunity so when you are able to do that and they know that oh she's teaching about health and wellness things if they start start thinking of i could really use some supplements and they know that that is something in your wheelhouse of what you sell they may begin to associate oh she has supplements she has supplements you know and it's just a matter of repetition so if you're showing up to networking events you're keeping it short sweet to the point of I'm Mrs. Smith (laughs) and I sell uh, Arbonne and it is a supplement company like I don't know I'm making this up I don't know hardly anything about Arbonne but I've met an Arbonne dealer like so It's just things like that. You have to do kind of like the word association game with yourself for others. When they think Laura, they think brand, and then they know that I can help them with strategy and design. You know, it's like you're just kind of laying out those pieces for them. And what helps is just using a lot of that same verbiage when you're, you're talking about what it is that you do. Because once they hear that word over and over again if they hear the word brand design brand design brand design brand strategy brand strategy (laughs) brand 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 they're like oh I really need to work on my personal brand I know that Laura does branding so it's just a matter of associating your name with what it is that you do what it is that you sell associating your face (laughs) your image when people see you they know oh hey there's the there's the brand lady there's There's the Avon lady. There's the, you know, such and such person. And it's kind of funny because you're like, oh, I don't want to get that tagline. But actually, you do want to get that tagline because then the people remember that. My grandmother was an Avon lady. 
And majority of the time, I mean, if she wasn't out and about seeing people, she was sitting at her home calling people, asking them if they needed any orders, if they needed new catalogs. Like, she was really good at doing her Avon business. I remember I'd go over to her house as a kid and, you know, you'd see the big brown Avon boxes (laughs) sitting there where she had got a bunch of her clients' orders and she was getting them and putting them in those little white bags and getting them ready to go out with new little magazines and receipts and stuff and she enjoyed doing that. She's definitely a people person. So they knew her as the Avon lady because that's so much of what she did. She connected with people. She talked with people. But they knew her that she was the Avon lady. So kind of getting a tagline like that for yourself is not really a bad thing. Especially if you know you really want to grow a business. Because then if people need what you sell, they're like, oh, I know someone. You want people to be able to refer you because they know without a shadow of a doubt what it is that you do. So let me kind of like wrap this little thing up of how visuals help with your branding. So visuals and network marketing, having your own landing page, having your own Facebook, your own social media, having your own business card, you know, something that is maybe a little logo or just your name or something where people can immediately see and associate your name, your picture, uh, something with the brand that you are partnered with in order to, to sell their product, to sell their service or whatever it is that, you know, they have to offer. Now, this is kind of leading me more into, let's say you have a online based business, whether you have an Etsy shop, you have a online service based business, you know, you you're selling products or something through your website and you don't have a physical store, but you have gone to the online space because you're like, I can reach a broader audience. I can, you know, not just market to my little town that I'm in. I can market to towns across the U S towns across North America, towns worldwide. However you plan to market and who you plan to sell to, you're going to have to create visuals you know, when we're online, we're not just reading pages. So much of what we see online is visual and pictures and videos. You know, if you're, if you're ever trying to look for a recipe, I kind of hate this, but I understand like the reasoning behind it. Like you go and Google a recipe and you click on it and you're reading this blog and there's so many words before you actually get to the recipe where you're like, I just want the ingredients and the step-by-step and on like both sides of the page in between the words you see pictures you see these little pop-up videos where like you're scrolling past the video but then the video stays in the bottom corner with you (laughs) as you keep going and it's just this like continual in my opinion visual overload you have so many different ads vying for your attention most time they're in pictures you know like hardly ever do you actually go to a blog where the only pictures on there are actually the pictures of the recipe <laughs> I'm sure there are some out there they're just not as frequently rated highly on Google's search list but <clears throat> this is the thing here you know if you are in an online space having a word or a sentence or something that talks about you and your product is not going to be as powerful within a few milliseconds, a few seconds as a visual. You know, you can, you can go online you can look at different businesses and you will see that just like, just how much pictures are used, just how much videos are used, uh, even in like short spurts that it's just, it's, you know, that moving picture grabs your attention. So one of the things to really think about here, if you're in the online space and you're like, I need visuals, I could talk all day about my product and write all day about it, what my service and offer is, but unless I can really paint that picture and help that person see either myself, like pictures of you, if you're the service provider, 
if you're talking about your own specific story, even pictures that help to explain and add depth to your own story, like before and after photos, the during process of photos, um, but really just paying attention to what are those ideal feelings that you want your audience, whoever's attention you have, what is it that you really want them to see? Because pictures helps help us feel certain things. So if you're looking at, like, what photos should I put on my website? If you're using stock images, really take the time to just pick images that you, that give you that feeling that are like, yes, this, this speaks to what my business is about. Because it's easy to kind of just like, oh, you know, I want to speak to women. Let me just go grab some photos of some women and throw those in there. It's like, well, unless those women in those photos are doing something that helps to describe or inspire what it is that you are about and what it is that your business is about, it could tell a completely different story to someone else who comes across it. You know, even like the, even the colors that you use. I mean, you would not probably want to have a business of like, I inspire joy and vibrancy. And then you go to my website and then you see, uh, it's very black and white. There's no color. And there's things in bold lettering and then this really cursive font that you can hardly read you got to really pay attention to that visually would be kind of a turnoff I think of like they're they're the, this bubbly person and they're really invoking like this passion and joy and vibrancy but their page is very bland like I would almost want you know a pop of color some yellows or something in there to really help give that sense and that feeling of what they are inspiring for me, what they are wanting to help me feel in my life. If I don't get that feel when I go to their website, probably not going to (laughs) buy, you know, and, and that's okay because then that tells you, oh, okay, I need to rethink this. So there's this planning that goes in beforehand to really think through a lot of little details of what am I going to be putting out there for people to see and how is it going to be telling my story? How is my customer experience going to be? Because you can, you can define all those. I mean, it's kind of like the brick and mortar that I just talked about. When you go to the online space, your website is essentially your your little brick and mortar it's yes it's a it's a page on a screen but it's like they walked into the front door of your your store and what kind of sense and feel are they getting once they see that very top part of your home screen as they scroll down through it you know really think through what am I wanting them to experience and What things do I know of, you know, in pictures, in colors, help to bring that feeling alive? What help to add, what helps to add that depth? What picture can I just put up there for them that will immediately be in their mind when they come across my little, my, my website, my little storefront. And how do you repeat that on each page of your website to help keep adding that redundancy? Yes, but that redundancy creates familiarity, creates harmony, creates cohesion. It just, it's, it really gives a good sense of, okay, Everything that they are talking about, every single page that I go to has the same feel. And that's exactly what I want my customer to feel when they come in contact 
at any point along the way. If they started at my website, I want to give them that same feel if they have an email from me in their inbox. I want to give them that same feel because I'm creating that same look if they're over on my social media page. Wherever you can copy what you're already doing, creating that redundancy, if you will, to create familiarity, that is really the powerful thing about visuals with your brand because it is creating something that people get used to seeing they become familiar with and they begin to expect it one of the things if you'll notice like if you go to my social media page at laura glass designs or if you go to my website lauraglassdesigns.com you'll see similarities in that i do a lot of like these little pink text box with white words in them so like on my social media page certain reels and and posts will have you know the pink square with white wording in it and it may have black kind of more italic lettering around it that's something that I have started creating as a redundancy that is creating familiarity that's almost something that people will come to expect they're like oh hey I see that I know Laura Glass Designs. They see that on my website at the very top. There's a pink box. This has my logo. It says brand strategy. As you scroll down, there's other things where it will have, you know, the lettering backed. The background to the lettering will be that pink box. It, this, the products in my store. I changed all those out to have the same style and design because I want to get to give that sense of familiarity that sense of sameness because I'm creating something that people will begin to recognize and associate with my particular brand so I hope this is kind of making sense to you and one of the things I really love to do is to do strategy sessions and you know really really talk through the things for you to help you create that brand that stands out and helps you be memorable because you're creating that consistency you're creating that familiarity where people will come to expect a certain look or a certain design or a certain feel from you and your your social media page you know your website your business they they will get so used to it that they will immediately know What is your content compared to somebody else's? They will immediately know and look for that particular thing. That's what we want to be able to get them to do is to know it so well that it's easy for them to find. It's easy for them to remember. You know, they they will begin to make their own associations with our name, our business. So, you know, in that online space, there is such power in using visuals and especially in video one of the cool things you'll have to go back and listen to I think it was episode 21 uh, with Mariana Henninger and she is a brand trailer (laughs) maker she does you know emotional visual storytelling and and helps her clients to create like two to four minute videos that have such depth in telling the story of your brand and that is that was such a great episode I loved having her as a guest you'll have to go back and listen to that if that intrigues you but there's power in visuals whether you're using photos a logo colors um videos you know whatever it is there's so much power in it and you explode that power when it becomes so consistent in the fact that it's you know trying to trying to think of the right word here when it becomes like second nature that it has the same look the same vibe the same feel you may feel like I'm using the same thing over and over again and it's tiresome to me that's okay using that same thing over and over and over again is establishing instant recognition with your audience so I'm going to cut this episode here Thank you so much for listening today. 
And I hope this has been helpful for you. If you're interested in a strategy session, you can go to my website, go to the contact page, uh, the services page, and uh, you can submit my little, uh, little application that I have on there and say that you would like to do a strategy session. And I can send you information about that. Uh, or you can even message me on Instagram. Just send me a DM saying, hey, I would love to know more about a strategy session. I could really use that and I will send you uh, the details on that as well. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate your support. I hope you have a very blessed day.